Hey everyone, welcome back to the Flat Thunder channel. My name's Andy, and this is a big box on a skid. This was drop shipped at my house with a liftgate delivery service, and I had no idea that it was gonna be liftgate, and left in the middle of my driveway, so it was blocking everyone in the driveway. <laughs> I didn't quite understand that. It's palletized, not that it hurts my feelings, uh, but I didn't really think this was a palletizable load. Uh, the good news is, being on the pallet kept it from getting damaged or smashed during the delivery process, or at least we hope so. Let's cut into this thing and see what it looks like. Original wheel barrel mixer. Bullet points, quick mixing. Three steel blades, six cubic foot drum, easy cleaning, and flat free tires. So those tires should never deflate. Let's open her up, see if we can't get this bad boy assembled. Initial impressions of the instructions are pretty good. I'm not sure how clear that's coming through, but each step, the pictures could be just a shade bigger, but each step is actually a picture with text uh, as far as instructions on what to do. Uh, step one, just a given. Take all the parts out, remove all the packing material, place them so you can find it. Step two, looks like we're installing the wheels on the main frame structure. As suggested, I removed all the packing material from all the pieces. The only thing that was a little bit cumbersome was all the wrap on this main frame structure. It's basically saran wrap that's wrapped around and don't try cutting it off. Uh, find the spot, the spot where it started and or ended and work your way from the end back to the start. Uh, that's the best way to do it. Otherwise, you're going to be cutting your paint all up. Uh, not a problem. I mean, that was necessary to keep this from getting all scratched up during shipment. Let's get this axle and these... Uh, cool run flat or never flat tires on there. One thing that I did notice already in the unpackaging, uh, we have real bearings on the axle here with the grease cert. So that's definitely a good sign. Here we go. The tires go on the inside of the frame here. You might be asking yourself, how do you keep them from moving? Well, to actually read the directions, so the, <laughs> I went back the second time. There's an axle tube, wrong piece. There's an axle tube spacer. This axle tube spacer will keep the tires and wheels the appropriate distance apart. We need to thread our axle in, get our spacer. Go through our first bearing here. washer and spring clip. And make it fall out the other side. Nice. Now I did notice when I was assembling this here, the axles were undercut a little bit, so the axle won't slide all the way through the bearings. That makes it a little bit interesting to try to get it in there, uh, because you can't shove the axle quite a ways further one way because you go too far into the bearing into the larger size portion of the axle. So you had to kind of tilt it out of there as you saw, and then the frame is sprung a little bit tight. Uh, not that that hurts my feelings, it's probably better than going all over the place. Looks pretty nice. On to the next step. Next step involves the gear motor and these cover bolts that hold the gear case together have longer screws and the first step they want you to do is to remove these loose nuts, flat washers, and lock nuts. 
And then they want you to tighten these nuts that we just removed the uh, nuts and washers from because this is prone to leaking, which I don't fully understand that, but it wants you to tighten these to 10 foot-pounds. So I'll have to see if we can find a torque wrench and a deep well and get on there. Did I break it? I don't... <laughs> I pulled the threads right out of the nut. <laughs> the threads have no, the nut has no threads in it. Can you see it? Oh. Good news is, I think the bolt is still good. <sighs> Should have saw that one coming. Bad idea. Ten. 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 It says right in here, tighten the four nuts on the gear motor to 10 pounds of torque. Doesn't say foot pounds. I'm assuming it's foot pounds, but that does not work. Do not do that. No, no. We dodged a pretty big bullet with that one there. That could have been really disastrous because I don't have longer metric bolts like that in stock. That would have stunk. Good news is it just pulled all the threads out of the Nut, which has seemed pretty weird. Must be one of those special low carbon, zero carbon nuts. Well, these make me really paranoid, seeing as how the one already stripped the threads out of it. Didn't really go whole hog tighten them, tightening these, but uh, I'm afraid if I tighten them anymore, they're just going to strip right out. Yeah, not really happy with the size of these bolts and the quality of the material in the nuts. If it focuses, there are no threads left on the inside of that. It just ripped them right off. Luckily, I have this assortment of metric fasteners. No bolts that long, but I do have... Uh, come on. I do have an arrangement of M6 nuts here. It's just as one of the hand dandiest things to have. Previously, I'd never had metric fasteners. I always had to buy, buy them one at a time. I'm gonna put a doubler nut on those uh, bolts just to lock them in place. Hopefully these extra nuts will be kind of like jam nuts, just in case those factory original nuts do yield, like the one we already twisted off. Really don't want this thing falling off when you're trying to mix uh, up a load of cement or concrete. See how that goes. The next step is to attach the drive hub to the back of the drum here. Uh, but it does come with this rubber isolator bushing and it doesn't really say or show where this goes in the instructions. I'm gonna assume it goes here so it doesn't wear into the plastic tub as this works its way around because um, it definitely doesn't show it on the inside or outside for that matter. It does tell you that the bolts go in from the outside. I'm hoping this is right. It's getting squirrely on me. That's a ticket. What do you think the torque rating on these are? Three foots? Tighten them in, tightening them in a diamond pattern. I don't know that it really matters, but 
just the way I do things like this. I'm not for sure if I missed it. I don't think I did. I'm going to go back and look. But it, I don't think it mentions installing the, min the mixer blades anywhere in there. And the picture where I installed the hub there shows these already in. But unless I overlooked it, I didn't see it. Um, pretty straightforward. I mean, these can only go on one way. And if you don't know what these are, you probably shouldn't be using this thing. So let's get these slapped in there uh, before we get the drum attached to the drive motor. So it shows the bolts coming in from the outside in the parts diagram. Wasn't getting enough thread sticking through there without embedding the square drive into the bottom of the drum there. Oh, two more to go. That's kind of smart. They slotted it so you can get your ratchet through the top. Motor cover is missing one of the nuts for the bolts. This is a really cool feature here. It's basically like a quick linch pin almost. You just pop in there, then your handle's locked in place. Another hole would have been ideal to keep it like that. Well, the rubber handle will keep it on there. Gotta get some lubricant for these. Yeah. We finally got the cement mixer ready to rock and roll and you're ready to mix up some concrete. All we need to do is get the other portion of the project prepared and ready for the concrete mix. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Leave your questions and comments in that section below. And don't forget to punch that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, everyone. Mmm, mmm.